All right, welcome back to another episode of Cameo Podcast. I'm back at uh, Redbeard, uh, which I always seem to find myself at. It's kind of the the water cooler, the watering hole uh, for a lot of Kamloops, especially on the n- north side of uh, of Kamloops. This is another Civic Edition podcast, and I'm sitting next to Corley Delwo. Yeah. I, did I say that correctly? You did. Yeah, and so I, I'm not, I don't know if this is a... a, a a benefit to you or not, but you're actually the first candidate that I've met with that I haven't had a conversation with previously from other sort of things. So, okay. you know, it's... That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. I'm always open to meeting new people and um, getting the perspective of everyone I meet and and talking about issues and even just, uh, you know, what people are doing with their own, their own life and endeavors and things. It's quite interesting to uh, see what the diversity we have going on in the city, actually. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just to, I did like a little bit of background research of reading, you know, the articles in the paper or Mm -hmm. the other online articles that were out there. Um, And then, you know, I said, told my wife, yeah, I got to run. Um, And she's like, who are you meeting? I'm like, Corley. And, And she actually is the one who taught me how to say your last name um, because she used to work with Johnny who you used to work with as well so that that's kind of like my very small Kamloops is a small place it sure is thing and so you're an esthetician by trade Uh, I am now yeah I did do do some uh, schooling at TRU I entered the respiratory therapy program um, got through a year and a half of it and decided it actually wasn't for me but the education and stuff that I gained from that was really helpful going into my passion which is aesthetics and um, I I learned a lot of biology about the human body and the mind and things and and I took some psychology courses as well and it actually taught me a lot of dealing with people in general just changed my perspective on how uh, I engage with with a lot of people it was actually quite quite good education and I was really happy to have it Um, I'm just not the right person to be sitting with sick people all the time, and and it just I'm too emotional, if you will. Okay. I, I get very um, attached to people. I, yeah. I I like you know helping people, but I'm too emotional to separate myself from mm-hmm. you know people who are in bad situations with their children or loved ones. So yeah. I just figured I would go into something that where I'm making people feel still feel good, but. Not dealing with the negative of yeah, of a little bit life. more surface yeah, level. You yeah. can still be a therapist when uh, when needed. Exactly. Yeah, it's it, totally great. Just just for a caveat, you know, Alan Shaver is actually sitting over there, so it's funny because like we're talking about TRU and watering hole. It's like yeah. yeah, you know, we got Alan Shaver right there. You got Patty of North Shore BIA here. Yeah. You know, Redbeard is is kind of the the place. Now you also live on the north side of the river, correct? Yes, in, I'm up in Bachelor Heights, you're and in Bachelor. Um, I do frequent actually the North Shore a lot. We we like it over here. My husband was raised in West Side, and um, our kids go to West Side Secondary and West Mount and stuff. So, I I try to keep my business on this side of the city because I I think the North Shore has got a lot of potential. It's beautiful. A lot of the cool shops along Tranquil are amazing, and we we try to stay on this side. I mean, obviously we do the big stuff up at Costco and Walmart yeah. when needed and Superstore, but for the most part, I mean, I like. I like running around the North Shore and checking out all the parks, and we frequent Westside Park a lot and hang out with the kids, and we, we do lots of sports and stuff with the kids, so we're, we're all over the city, but I love it on this side. Yeah, no, I, I, I can totally relate. I never, like, I'm not from Kamloops, so when my wife would say, like, going up the hill, I'm just like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's 15 <laughs> right, minutes away, exactly. right? But now that I've lived on the north side of Kamloops for a couple of years, it's like, Ah, uh, that's I that's a go trek. All the way to that's Walmart, a <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it is. Um, I grew up in Alberta, so uh, I was raised in Grand Prairie, born in Calgary. I spent a lot of time throughout different cities in in Alberta and um, the big cities, both Edmonton and An- and Calgary. I lived in. So coming here with my husband was a big change for me. It's a lot smaller, and um, I was the same way. I'm like, oh, so so what? We've got to go over to you know, we got to go to to the superstore up the hill and now my son's in football four days a week and I'm up 
to TCC for, yeah. you know, three days and then games on Sundays. So there's times I'm like, oh, I got to go all the way to TCC and drop him off and figure out what to do for an hour and a half. And then, you know, if I come all the way back to the house or do something at home, it's then I got to go all the way back. So it you don't really notice it at first but once you once you've gotten used to the city and the layout you're like oh i just want to keep everything in my little area but yeah totally it's it's it's, um to me it's this city's got so much to offer so you know it's great that we have so many places to go and do things and and in all reality if we really think about it 15 minutes isn't that bad no it's it's not it's we're we're just spoiled little brats at times that's right so what, uh, what drew you to put your hat in the ring for the civic election? Well, a lot of things I watched in the last election, the by-election and stuff, and um, I think one of the biggest things is, is, is I see so many kids coming out of TRU with these great certificates for trades. Uh, my kids are up and coming into one's in high school, the other one's graduated and, you know, thinking about her future, and my son's 12 and he's coming up, you know, he's going to be in high school next year. And I think the thing that bothers me the most is that they have no jobs to go to once they get here, you know, get to their, you know, desired education levels. And it's really hard because my husband already goes away to work. He's in oil and gas. So Mm -hmm. it makes it tough when he leaves. And then now I'm risking my kids leaving as well. And then I'm just going to be here all by myself. And I don't want that. You'll get used to it. I, I want my kids to be able to stay close to home and, you know, whether they go away to school and come back but I would like them to be able to have jobs here they all love it here and don't want to leave but if it happens it happens right so well is it a fallacy then that like because the baby boomers right there's more baby boomers than there is millennials or whatever be right they Mm -hmm. always like say that there's going to be more jobs than there's people to fill them or is that well just not the case for Kamloops in the trades sector I really think there is a, a lack of Jaw, or lack of manpower that's why we're we're putting the time and effort into the trades programs with TRU and and other schools across the province and the country um, but one of the things that we've turned away is a lot of industry and a lot of I, I think you know there's a shortage of doctors here which you know if kids were interested in being doctors they they, they would have the opportunity to work here but when it comes to a lot of the a lot of the kids now, they've grown up with parents that are in industry. You know, our generation. I mean, I'm in my 40s now, but my parents and my generation, everybody's worked in industry, whether it be oil patch or some sort of trade or pipelining or or whatnot. And I think that those kids that grew up in that now think that that's the way to go. That mm-hmm. it's easier to get a two-year certificate than it is to do seven years to be a doctor, let's say. But I think we're a little more white collar job wise, if if you want to categorize them. White collar, <laughs> like really? you know, like professionals, like, like accountants, yeah, or... accountants and lawyers and doctors and nurses, and and we really focus a lot on our health care. So we, you know, we push the nursing. I know that uh, there's 80 some seats for the nurses program here at TRU, and and there's like 800 applicants every mm-hmm. year. So. You know, it, if we had some other forms of revenue and industry and job creation, it might diversify our job market. And, you know, our, our unemployment rate is one of the highest in BC. So I think we've turned into an anti industry, anti business city with, you know, different things like our high taxes and, you know, just current city council pushing away a lot of opportunities. So I'm hoping that it'll cha- it will change with new city council. Do you think there'll be a big shift? Because, like, you're one of the new faces, you know, that you're currently sitting there. It's it's the, you know, the the faces of city council. People all know who they are, Mm -hmm. and they've kind of been more or less incumbents. For a long time. For a long time, right? So, well, being new on the the horizon here, I'm kind of, like, I'm not attached to the outcome of what happens with me. I, I see a lot of feedback on social media that's saying people want change and I'm really hoping that people who want change will actually get out and vote and there is some people leaving we you know Tina Lang's not coming back and Pat Wallace is gone Um, and I kind of hope that we have a little bit of a shift do I think there's a, a a chance that it'll happen absolutely but it, that all depends on the voters I mean everybody's the keyboard warrior and talks the talk on social media but do they actually get up and vote and, and make the difference so you know 
I think for sure that there will be a shift. How big of one, I'm not sure. Do, are we going to have enough people that will shift it to start focusing on those needs and those, those issues? Or will it just be you know, a couple people that will get in and be focused on that and always get voted out anyway? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I totally understand. And, and, and I've seen you uh, engage with the Keyboard Warriors you know, online quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, I forget which it was, um, but you had a really good answer. Uh, and, and it kind of came up on top because, you know, they like to try and pigeonhole you. And, you know, I've, I've been on that side. Absolutely. I mean, social media is famous for that, right? Everybody's going to pick you apart and try to try to make you lose your cool, I guess, if you will. And I've learned over the years and that, um, you know, you get better results if you're nice to people, honestly. Totally. Um, you know, you can... You can go online and, and yell and scream and rant and rave all you want, but at the end of the day, you look just as bad as the rest of them that are doing that. So I, I like to rise above that. And instead of engaging in the argument, I like to try to come up with solutions or even just hear people's ideas and hear people's perspectives because we all have seen different things. We've all experienced different things. And if you're not open-minded to listen to people and engage with people, then you're not going to have a, a positive, you know, outcome if you're just going to argue with people fut- futilely, basically. Yeah. And, and I've been on that side and I had mm-hmm. to like go get off social media for a month or so or whenever I, I did it. Yeah, yeah. I took a break. Um, cause I was quite good at a couple things of like setting people up and then knocking them down and I had some fun doing it but at the end of the day yeah like am I really helping or I'm really just adding to the chaos and and the frustration exactly I think we've all been guilty of that right I mean if you're good at if you're good at the quick wit and you're good at the quick responses yeah you can you can do one of two things you can come up with something positive or you can bring out you know the negative and stuff and I try to be the positive person. I try to teach my kids to walk away and, you know, not engage. I mean, social media is obviously an outlet for teens as well, for bullying. And and it's crazy what the girls go through. The girls are way worse, in my opinion, than boys. But And they're able to do it behind the veil of Snapchat now. Exactly. (laughs) Or, you know, the anonymous sites and different things like that, which I think are the most ridiculous thing that anybody ever invented, you know. But, you know, I'm teaching my girls and my son that... It's better to just, you know, not engage in that. It's not worth your energy. It's not worth wasting your time on the naysayers and the negativity negativity and people who really don't have an open mind or a good perspective. Yeah. On, on that vein, is there a reoccurring theme that you seem to have people keep on asking you about? Well, I know a lot of people are really sick and tired, obviously, of the homelessness and the drug addicts and the needles in the city, right? Um, it's a huge problem, and it's not a simple solution. We can't just go around picking up after them. We can't just keep enabling them. There has to be a multi-level solution. And one of the things that I've learned actually from a friend of mine who is an ex-addict is the missing components in our solution to this problem is when they are wanting help finally they can go to detox but when they get out of detox there's nowhere for them to go so they go back on the streets so we're missing beds for treatment we're not you know looking at the underlying issues like mental health you know diseases and and why they're there to begin with and then they need a second stage housing system that allows them after they've been done treatment to move back into the community you know have the support where they can get jobs and live and learn to live sober and learn skills that maybe they've forgotten or were never taught Um, teach them to be self-sufficient give them dignity give them some self-worth and even get them into the community giving back instead Mm -hmm. of just constantly just enabling them to continue you know using drugs and I think a lot of that's really hard for us to do as a city because a lot of it's not in our jurisdiction. Like, we don't have the say over interior health. We can't go to interior health and say, no, you're not putting that safe injection site up or you got to start stop handing out needles. We're not allowed to do that. We, we don't have that power. So it makes it really tough for us, even as a community, just to solve these problems. Yeah, I, I guess the, the safe injection site, you know, as someone who would align himself with the word addict... Um, I, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, I, I can I can see it because I like parking back there, and I see mm-hmm. it when it when the bus is there. And 
But then on the flip side, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, the, the heroin addict or ex-heroin addict that no one knows who's now uber, not uber, but quite successful in community involved, yeah. right? So I've seen the rebound too, right? So it's, uh, it's definitely a tough, tough thing. But then on the flip side, right, like my, my father in Ontario, just something happened and, and they gave him Percocets and he, you know, that's the only way he could sleep after three days, right? So like wow. we're at the, the point where it's like, well, hey, dad, make sure you don't go down that road because that's a, a large part too is, is the amount of mm. opioids in the suburbs Absolutely. That, that people don't want to talk about. They think it's just these, these the, uh, homeless, the people. homeless people. But it's really not. I mean, a lot of times, um, you know, even myself, I've, I'm no stranger to dealing with mental health issues. I, I've had my, my battles in the past with depression and anxiety. And, you know, the, the medications I was given as well to manage that, you know, had, could have taken a really big hold on me. And yeah. one thing I will never forget, I... I spoke to someone um, when I was going through that, and he said the words to me, you control the drugs, don't let the drugs control you. And I never, ever forgot him saying that to me. And I always made sure that I stayed, you know, in constant contact with my doctor and took the steps medically to make sure that I was in control. And I did go through some, you know, therapy and stuff, and those things were helpful. And I think those are the key things that we've been missing with dealing with anybody who's suffering from mental health or, you know, the suicide rates are up. And, you know, even kids these days are, are going through a lot of mental health issues and whatnot. And, and you know, they're, they're so quick to give them the drugs and they're so quick to put them on the medications. And then the waiting lists for counseling for them, which really addresses the underlying issues, is, is you know months long like some of them have waited six months seven months even yeah. you know kids that I know of my 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 kids friends as well they're they're needing services and they're not available and I think that's one of the biggest things we're lacking in keeping our kids from going down that road as well yeah my understanding there's there's either one or two psychiatrists in town mm -hmm. right and so yeah it's a six month waiting list which you know I'm on because my doctor wants to see if I'm bipolar or, you know, acutely bipolar or whatever it be, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you could actually, I think, you asked me how long I've been doing the podcast. You could probably go through and you could chart, you know, how I'm doing based on, you know, how my, 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 my podcast going. is, right? There's, there's, there's this large archive of banks of, like, of gaps or also just how I chatted with people, right? Like, yeah. you know, and it, it, I think that's part of what this podcast really was, was, was A, to get myself out of isolation, right? Because it didn't make sense for me to do it on Skype. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to get out and see people and, and, and do it that way and have a conversation. And so it's kind of slightly a selfish thing. And the fact that I'm just recording and sharing with people, right, is, is just the upside of, of this Internet age that we live in where you can overshare everything, else, everything, <laughs> everything pretty much. Yeah. Nothing's um, nothing's kept private anymore. And and, you know, I, you know, saying that I've gone down my road with with mental illness and depression and things, you know, I I don't even care if at the end of the day that that harms my campaign because I'm being truthful and, you know, I'm truthful with myself. I don't hold back. I like to make sure people understand what, you know, what got me there, why. And I also, you know, it helps me get on a level with people who wouldn't normally talk about it to somebody. And I've had a lot of people I know and friends and, and in the past clients who've even come to me and said, how do you do it? Like, what changed for you? And I said, you know, I have three kids and I have a reason. And I spent a lot of money. I, I opted to go to a psychologist because they were more ready, readily available. Yeah. And I spent a ton of money just going in and obviously dealing with stuff in my closet, you know, my, my ghosts and demons and whatnot. Yep. And then I turned it around and decided that life was way better living it and learning to live with, you know, managing my depression and anxiety. And I've been great for the last like five years. I, I suffered for about two years really badly. And five years now I've been doing amazing because I continue to practice what I've been taught and self-care keeping myself healthy sleeping properly eating properly and all those things I mean y you can see when people come in to see you or you're visiting with a friend you haven't seen in a while and they go from let's say one week they you see them and they're great and they're happy and then all of a sudden they're in this 
state of mind where you're just looking at them going, okay, what happened? Why are you, why is this like this? And it usually it boils down to the fact that their stress levels with life are just too much and they can't handle it. And so I do share with my friends and family, you know, how I've managed, how I manage stress, how I manage a busy schedule and how I keep everything going for myself because at the end of the day, I have a family to worry about. Totally, totally. It's that grounding, grounding feeling. Absolutely. Uh, you know, kind of kicks your butt to, to fix things. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of just an easygoing conversation. What's something that uh, you wish the other outlets would allow you to talk about? Is there something that's been, you know, kind of in your brain that you wish you got to talk about more? Well, see... The hard part that I have about the whole campaigning and things is um, I'm very passionate about the fact that we need to bring industry in and a lot of people are so against things like Ajax um, despite you know reports that were put out and whatnot and I, I try to not be too pushy about my side on that because yeah. obviously I think that going into this we have to look at opportunity very objectively and so I can't really put my opinion on it I, in fact I shouldn't even put put an opinion on it mm -hmm. I would rather look at the facts and see that you know we're bringing well-managed industries and developments and investments into Kamloops that are going to bring in good revenue and fee and feasibility you know obviously for the function of the city but it's hard because you you see all the protesters and then you see people on the extre that extreme end and then you're on the other end going well this is my this is a lot of people's livelihoods and a lot of people's bread and butter and I can't be pushy that way because there is things that we need to be responsible about so I try not to venture too far to yep. the other extreme of it's all about industry because it which from what I've seen online, to interject, a lot of people think view you as, you know, the farther, the further extreme. Or at least that's like what I've glossed from, you know, online. A little bit, yeah. Um, like I said, with my husband being in oil and gas, I mean that's that's our bread and butter that keeps our family going, and and um, so I am passionate about it. But I've also worked in the field with my husband as a medic. So when people are uneducated, say about you know the policies and procedures of, of you know cleanup of oil spills and different things like that I've been on a site that had a small spill and the amount of craziness that goes on trying to get it cleaned up and they do get it cleaned up and the way it gets cleaned up people don't see that part of it they're not out there witnessing it they're just hearing what the news outlets and the media is blowing out of proportion in my opinion so it's it's tough to not yeah. put that spin on things right yeah I, I like my little brother just graduated and, and he's a geo engineer I don't know some smart geoscience smart smarter than me kind of thing <laughs> You know, and then, you know, I have uh, some other family members who are in oil and gas, right, in the safety side of things. Mm -hmm. You know, people I respect and, you know, they're quite educated on it. And other friends who work in the mining industry and, you know, they've read the reports and they've all told me, yeah, it's all thumbs up. You know, it's not all that big of a deal. I guess my flip side is like, is it not kind of short-sighted to be just industry-based though too, right, as... You know, you can look at all the the mining towns or whatever it mm -hmm. be right, and if electric cars are going to be here in twenty years on a, as like a mainstay or whatever it be, I guess plastics are super important. But like, is it not kind of a short sighted term of just be so resource based in one town? Well, you see, I look at I look at it as the building blocks and the foundation of building up the city. Um, because the revenue is so high with it, it allows us to expand the city um, you know even though we are pushing towards more green products and more green environment and green things you know and I do see the place for that absolutely we should be doing a lot more to conserve and reduce and reuse and recycle but when you think about it if you look at uh, how you construct a, a electric car you still got to use metal you've still got to put computer components in it that are made out of plastic and and copper and different things and and so there will always I think be a need for mining and industry 
And I think that the balance has to be there. So you need to start with that, build from it, and then, you know, entice, you know, with, with revenue and business and jobs, we're going to entice other people to come to the city. You know, some guy might go and work. Uh, well, actually, for example, I have a, a friend of mine who her husband is a miner. He's out. He works out at, uh, I think, New Gold. And he actually is working a week on, week off, and he just bought a sweet streeping company, and he's doing that on his week off with a couple of family members and stuff. So I think it allows for people to have the income and the money to save to become entrepreneurs, to push for, you know, people might have hobbies in tech, you know, computers and things, and they might, you know, open a tech store on the side or put it, you know, different companies like that. And I think having the base will really entice more other you know more businesses that we are lacking here you know we need we need the diversity of business but you have to start somewhere right yeah it's, it's a little bit a lot of people I, i'll use the term not my backyard yeah right though they're, they're okay with the uh the end product but they're not okay with it being in their backyard exactly. which you know you have to of course manage and you know living on the north side yeah it's not gonna be in our direct backyard but you know true and um and I get that. I think, you know, people want to make sure that they are, you know, safe and having healthy air to breathe. And, and I, I, I would like to think that Canada is a leader in, you know, environmentally friendly things and you know, a leader in pollution reduction. And, you know, so I look around here and I think, you know, our, our pollution here is really not that bad. And compared to cities like Calgary, Toronto, you know, even going across the ocean to Japan and China and stuff, I mean, our pollution is far from what they have. I mean, the worst pollution we've seen is the wildfires. And that lasts two weeks and we all suffer for it and then it goes away and we're back to our beautiful clean air and our beautiful city and sun shining. And, you know, I think people, I think people will really be able to get on board as long as our industry is managed and well managed you know by people that care about the community as much as they care about jobs and and expanding stuff into the community awesome so what was a side another side of uh Corley that we haven't seen in this election well so when I did my Kamloops Matters there was a question uh to tell people something that you do or something about yourself that people wouldn't know and I'm actually a very avid gamer oh really <laughs> I uh I play World of Warcraft quite <laughs> a lot um lately obviously I haven't had time because I've been really busy with all of the campaigning and my kids stuff and everything but my husband and I've played World of Warcraft since 2008 and um of course my kids my son was you know about two years old and sitting on my lap watching me play and now he plays as well and my one daughter plays as well so we're kind of a gaming family and um, of course then we have Xboxes and and Wii's and all that kind of stuff so we're very avid gamers and it's uh, it, you know it's it's really fun and I like it because it's something on those really cold miserable days that we can do to pass the time and it's cheap entertainment and yeah, it's just, uh, and it's a whole other community there. You know, you're actually playing with people online, and I've gotten to know people from all over the world. Of course. So. Yeah, the eSport community is, you know, the the money in it is, is I, I can't remember. I think, no, it, it has a clip like Hollywood in, in the entertainment industry, whatever it be, right? And as, as the tournament capital, you know, can, you know, Canada, whatever it be, in sports, 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 do you think there's an opportunity to actually move into esports from like you know that would be interesting to see actually i think um i think there's a whole realm of virtual reality coming up and i think there's a whole realm of different uh you know electronic sports that would be really cool Uh, you know my kids are like all into comic-con and all that kind of stuff they they love it they you know and i think that would be fun to have different things like that coming into the city you know bringing in di- you know that diverse side of things because a lot of people look at gamers and they think you're just a big nerd and yeah. you're not sports and you're not athletic and stuff and and my kids are athletic and I'm off you know my husband and I are both athletic but we have that that mind thing that we have to challenge right and I think that's important these days you know to keep the mind sharp and healthy yeah I think there's what CamCon next month you know the first Camloops kind of tabletop gaming slash That'd be, you know i gotta check that out because i i really want to go t- see what that's all about It'd yeah be interesting i think it's coming up third week of october i, I need to check on that i'll have to check that out because uh, there is you know like 
you know, there, there's the comic book store downtown mm-hmm. and the tabletop Which I've been gaming. in. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I went and bought some Blizzard stuff in there, some World of Warcraft cards for Christmas one year, and yep. and it's cool. It's cool stuff. Yeah, it's, I guess it's Allison Cly's husband who manages yep. it. And, yep. uh, and it's neat that, you know, Kamloops, a small community, is able to sustain these, these smaller niches. Exactly. which which is is challenging at times and again that's where when you you know you create more jobs and you keep your kids here they're going to continue to put into the community and the local businesses and I think you know all the way around it only benefits all of us if we keep our kids at home and keep the you know keep families together and and keep you know keep the income and into the you know that they have into our economy right you know so so small businesses like that don't have to close but with the with the rental vacancy rate so low right like if your kids do leave right they're gonna end up living at home with you which it sounds like you're okay with I would be perfectly fine my husband on the other hand would like to see them gone when they turn 18 (laughs) so um you know this day and age I think I've really um I think that the definition of moving out at 18 is as it's really actually just what people expect at 18 like it you're you're an adult now you've you've hit maturity off you go go do your thing and and honestly I think for myself I was out actually in high school I moved out I was 17 and um, it actually deterred me from going to school and getting my education it deterred me from doing things that took me till later in life to do Um, you know I had my kids fairly young as well and and that was a deterrence for me to get my education so I think encouraging them to stay home like I'm actually encouraging my 17 year old to stay home and and go to school here she if she had her way she'd be running off right at 18 and and she's just one of those slot like me and it's okay I'll just leave but I know that this day and age it's too expensive to live on your own when you're going to school or trying to go to school and it, it makes more sense just to stay at home. I mean, you collaborate as a family, you work together, you you know share the costs, and my kids have to pay rent when they turn 18 unless they're going to school. But I think that because of the low vacancy rate and low rental spaces, that why bother? Why why head out and go and put yourself in that position anyway? Well, maybe she needs to uh, experience eating oatmeal for two weeks straight to, to understand right. what it's like. Well, if they had their way, they'd live off craft Dinner and Itchy Bands. So. <laughs> Good way to get scurvy, which yeah, right? I've had friends get. <laughs> but until, you know, yeah, until you're out there and you can't, you know, they're used to the meal being on the table and, and then, you know, you say fend for yourself and they go make craft Dinner, <laughs> Yeah, you know, but they still get their meal a couple times a week that they'll miss. They will. It'll yeah, take no. about two weeks and they'll be like, oh God, I need, I need real food. I used to turn my nose up at pork chops and I don't, I don't anymore. Nope, right? nope not happening. <laughs> I know the, the, I think the, that's another issue going on in Kamloops. I, I read the article about the family, the five that's living in a hotel and her daughter's staying with um, a friend to go to school. Um, it's really unfortunate that they're in that position. And, you know, he, I saw a lot of backlash from people on, and comments on that. And I was really disheartened that people were so judgmental towards this family. She's got two children under three and um, her daughter's in school. And her husband's working here. He is working, and he's working towards his apprenticeship, getting his hours in. Still has some school to finish up. And it sounds like to me that they're actually getting turned away because of the size of their family, and the fact that you know there's no three bedrooms available in town, which I don't think is right. I and I and I'm really disgusted that the provincial government passed that legislation that said that landlords can raise rent by four and a half percent every year if they want to and to me I mean let's let's look at other option other things that would benefit landlords you know we get squatters we get people destroying properties you know make it easy for those landlords to kick those people out not having to go through an entire court process just to get something if if you go in and you see some form of you know major damage done to your home you have the right to evict them because that's your property and give it to people who will respect it you know make it so that you don't have to raise your rent because you just had to sink 40 grand into redoing your entire house because someone trashed it like those things are, are to me are ridiculous that people face and you know have standards that landlords aren't allowed to leave their places in disarray and and bad conditions for their tenants yeah i uh 
I came across this one um, Calgary landlord who did not sink a dollar into it and is now probably kicking himself because he didn't remove the black mold, which is now what is allowing these uh, crack fiends to to stay, yeah. right? Because, you know, it's not... He doesn't have a way to properly kick them out, but but, but he kind of shot himself in the foot because he was being an absentee landlord. And then mm-hmm. the flip side is, you know, uh, another previous landlord that I know decided to just sell this month because with the upcoming legislation, he doesn't want to deal with, with cannabis smokers in his, his, in his, his property, property either, yeah. right? Um, because though it's going to be legal, how do you really regulate... Right? As a landlord, you can't say, no, you can't smoke it in my house because it's legal now, right? And, and and even when it was illegal, it didn't stop me and my friends to, you right. know, from smoking. And uh, Well, and the same goes for cigarette smoking, right? You have a non-smoking premise, and why then why would you rent to a smoker? Absolutely. When, I, when I moved in, it was like, yeah, she was supposed to be non-smoking, but it, the cigarette burns and the carpet said otherwise. Exactly. And, it, you know, it's... um. It's just unfortunate that I think all the way around that society is so, um, they just, society just disregards rules, if you will. Like, it doesn't matter what you, what you signed or what you agreed to. If somebody's not there telling you otherwise or holding you accountable, you'll just do what you want anyway. And I think it's, I think it's sad that, that that's what society's becoming, that we just do what we want and who cares? It doesn't matter about the consequences because there usually isn't any or, you know, or they're, the consequences are so minimal that they, they just do what they want. And it, yeah. it's, it's kind of, you know, the way kids are even being brought up nowadays. And, but my, I don't let my kids get away with stuff like that. Yeah, a little bit of discipline is is useful. Yeah, they're in trouble because they didn't take the garbage bins out this morning. So, oh, <laughs> I left to go do raise a reader today, and I reminded them it's garbage day. Make sure the bins go out. I come home at you know court t- five to nine, and the bins weren't out yet. So I had you to do it myself. You know what you should do is, is subscribe to their cell phones because they all have cell phones. Yeah. Do they not? Yeah. So they get the text message at six a.m. Take the garbage out. Well, I was still home at six, and I, he was up. He was my. They were both up, and I'm like, get the garbage out, okay? And they forgot as they tootle out the door, and ah, uh, then they can't complain that you didn't remind them, right? It's like, did you get a text message? Did you ignore it? Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, yeah. now it's automated, right? Yeah. That's that's literally the only only way I know it's garbage day is if I get a text message at five thirty. Only positive thing that. Uh, technology has going for it is you can set your schedule and your reminders on it really yeah yeah and the city because like it changes from like a wednesday to a thursday or whatever be right like i can't after long weekends yes well they have the the new city app that you can download that you can go into and check your garbage days after a long weekend okay what's my day and and um you know it's uh, we stay on top of it but i i put the garbage out anyway so it didn't matter (laughs) nah it sounds like your kids are old enough they should they can do it. Yeah. 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 They're, they're 12 or... 12 and s- almost 17. 12 and so. 17. Yeah, they definitely can do it. They should be doing so. a lot more. You know, that's... Uh, I, was, I was raised that you had to do your, your fair share of chores, and it, it sounds like kids get off easy these days. They but do. Uh, I mean, we, we do have a chore list, and we do push the kids to put, you know, do their share. But, I mean, we're all busy, too, so I, I, don't make, I don't try to make excuses, but my husband says I do make excuses for them because I'm like, well, we were here, and we were there, and we had football, and we had, you know, last yep. night my daughter and I were out till 20 to 9. I, I'm volunteering for the rugby fundraising committee for Westside because we're trying to promote and get enough money for a scrum machine for the school as well as... Uh, fundraising for their trip to provincials, which mm-hmm. will be on the island at a really fancy private school somewhere. Not sure, not sure what it's what the name of it is, but they get to go down there this year. And oh, nice. um, and then I'm also fundraising for and on the board for the um, music boosters class at, or Westside Music Boosters. So my daughter's in choir as well and and band, and we're doing a trip to New Orleans this year. And oh wow. And I wasn't going to jump on that board of directors, uh, you know, the, the committee, but if you're on the board, you get the first dibs of chaperoning. So <laughs> I really want to go. It's going to be a really amazing trip, and it's a great opportunity for her. And um, she just got her first job at uh, Safeway. She starts this week, so she'll be working in the deli on the North Shore here, and um, awesome. she's going to tribute to her trip. And 
I told her she had to contribute to my trip too because yep. I want to come and and um, it it's going to be amazing. So so we're busy. We were out doing that last night for initial meetings and whatnot and, and getting everybody together and it's a lot of work. So you know I I try to I try to not be too hard on them when yep. you know a bathroom isn't cleaned or there's laundry on their bedroom floor because we do run around a lot doing a lot especially when school starts. Yeah. Well, to kind of sum up our conversation, it sounds like you're really just trying to set your kids up for success in this city mm -hmm. that we love. Yeah. And uh, where can people find you and learn a little bit more? So I'm all over Facebook under uh, Coralie Delwo, obviously for my personal page. And um, I have my um, my campaign page as well. And my slogan is uh, a woman working for everyone because everyone matters. Um, I'm also on Instagram under Coralie Delwo. It's pretty easy to find me. Um, my email is www, er, coralie.delwo1 at gmail.com. And that's my campaign email. So if anybody has any questions, concerns, or anything like that, they can message me there as well. Perfect. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your crazy schedule to, to meet with me. And uh, uh, be sure to read up and learn everything about all the candidates. Get out on October 20th. Do your research. Vote. That's all I can ask for is vote. If I could ask one more thing, subscribe to the podcast or share. And uh, till next time, have a wonderful day. Cheers. Thanks for having me.